am here to read pages 40 to 59 on the one and only Ivan. I hope you like it. Three visitors are here, a woman, a boy, and a girl. They strut across, I strut across my domain for them. I dangle from my tire swing. I eat three banana peels in a row. The boy spits at my window. The girl throws a handful of pebbles. Sometimes I'm glad there is glass. After the show, the spit pebble children come back. I display my impressive teeth. I splash in my filthy pool. I grunt and I hoot, and I eat and eat some more. The children pound their pathetic chests. They toss more pebbles. Slimy chimps, I mutter. I throw a me ball at them. Sometimes I wish the glass was not there. I'm sorry I called those children slimy chimps. My mother would be ashamed of me. Like the, like the spit pebble children, Julia is a child. But that, after all, is not her fault. While her father, George, cleans the mall each night, Julia sits by my domain. She could sit anywhere she wants, by the carousel, in the empty food court, on the bleachers coated in sawdust. But I am not bragging when I say that she always chooses to sit with me. I think it's because we both love to draw. Sarah, Julia's mother, used to help clean them all, but when she got sick, she grew pale and stopped. St Sarah stopped coming. Every night, Julia offers to help George, and every night, he says firmly, Homework, Julia. The floors will just get dirty again. Homework, I have discovered, involves a sharp pencil and thick books and long sighs. I enjoy chewing pencils, and I am sure I would excel at homework. Sometimes Julia dozes off and sometimes she reads her books, but mostly she draws pictures and talks about her day. I don't know why people talk to me, but they often do. Perhaps it's because they think I can understand them. I can't understand them. Or perhaps it's because I can't talk back. Julia likes science and art. She, she doesn't like that Lila Burpee who teases her because her clothes are old. And she does like Deshaun Williams, who teases her too, but in a nice way. And she would like to be fa a famous artist when she grows up. Sometimes Julia draws me. I am an elegant fellow in her pictures with my silver back gleaming like moon on the moss. I never look angry the way I do on the fading billboard by the highway. I always look a bit sad though. I love Julia's pictures of Bob. She draws him flying across the page, a blur of feet and fur. She draws him motionless, peeking out from behind a trash can or on the soft hill of my belly. Sometimes in her drawings, Julia gives Bob's, Bob wings or a lion's mane. Once, she gave him a tortoise shell. But the best thing she ever gave him wasn't a drawing. Julia gave Bob his name. For a long time, no one knew what to call Bob. Now and then, a mall worker would try to approach him with a, tid, a tidbit. Here, doggy, they'd call, they'd call holding out a french fry. Come on, pooch, they'd say. How about a little piece of sandwich? But he would always vanish into the shadows before anyone could get too close. One afternoon, Julia decided to draw the little dog, curled up in the corner of my domain. First, she watched him for a long time, chewing on her thumbnail. I could tell she was looking at him the way an artist looks at the world when she's trying to understand it. Finally, she grabbed her pencil and set to work. When she was finished, she held up the page. There he was, the tiny, big-eared dog. He was smart and cunning, but his, his gaze was wistful. wistful. Under the picture, were, there were three bold, confident marks circled in black. I was pretty certain it was a word, even though I couldn't read it. Julia's father peered over her shoulder. That's him exactly, he said, nodding. He pointed at the circled marks. I didn't realize his name was Bob, he said. Me either, said Julia. She smiled. I had to draw him first. Bob will not let humans touch him. He says their scent upsets his digestion. But every now and then I see him sitting at Julia's feet. Her fingers move gently behind his right ear. Usually, Mac leaves after the last show, but tonight he sits in his office 
working late. When he's done, he stops by my domain and stares at me for a long time while he drinks from his brown bottle. George joins him, broom in hand, and Max says the things he always says. How about that game last night? And business has been slow, but it'll get better. You'll see. And don't forget to empty the trash. Matt glances over at the picture Julia is drawing. What are you making, he asks. It's for my mom, Julia says. It's a flying dog. She holds up her drawing, eyeing it critically. She likes airplanes and dogs. Hmm, Mac murmurs, sounding unconvinced. He looks at George. How's the wife doing anyway? About the same, George says. She has good days and she has bad days. Yeah, don't we all, Max says. Max starts to leave, then pauses. He reaches into his pocket, pulls out a crumpled green bill, and presses it into George's hand. Here, Max says with a shrug, buy the kids some more crayons. Mac is already out the door before George can yell, thanks. Stella, I say after Julie and her father go, I can't sleep. Of course you can, she says. You are the king of sleepers. Shh. Bob says from his perch on my belly, I'm dreaming about chili fries. I'm tired, I say, but I'm not sleepy. What are you tired of, Stella asks. I think for a while, it's hard to put, it's hard to put into words. Gorillas are not complainers. We're dreamers, poets, philosophers, nap takers. I don't know exactly. I kick at my tire swing. I think I may be a little tired of my domain. That's because it's a cage, Bob tells me. Bob is not always tactful. I know, Stella says. It's a very small domain. And you're a very big gorilla, Bob adds. Stella, I ask. Yes. I noticed you were limping more than usual today. Is your leg bothering you? Just a little, Stella answers. I sigh. Bob wrestles. He f his ears flick. He drools a bit, but I don't mind. I'm used to it. Try eating something, Stella says. That always makes you happy. I eat an old brown carrot. It doesn't help, but I don't tell Stella. She needs to sleep. You could try remembering a good day, Stel Stella suggests. That's what I do when I can't sleep. Stella remembers every moment since she was born, every scent, every sunset, every slight, every victory. You know, I can't remember much, I say. There's a difference, Stella says gently, between can't remember and won't remember. That's true, I admit. Not remembering can be different, can be difficult, but I've had a lot of time to work on it. Memories are precious, Stella adds. They help us they help tell us who we really are. Try remembering all your keepers. You always liked Carl, the one with the harmonica. Carl, yes, I remember how he gave me a coconut when I was still a juvenile. It took me all day to open it up. I try to recall my other keepers that I have known, the humans who cleaned my domain and prepared my food and sometimes kept me company. There was Juan, who poured Pepsis into my mouth, and Katrina, who used to poke me with a broom when I was sleeping, and Ellen, who sang, how much is that monkey in the window? With a sad smile, she scrubbed my water bowl. And then there was Gerald, who once brought me a box of fat, sweet strawberries. Gerald was my favorite keeper. I haven't had a real keeper for a long time. Max says he doesn't have the money to pay for an ape babysitter. These days, George cleans my cage and Mac is the one who feeds me. When I think about all the people who have taken care of me, mostly it's Mac. I recall day in and day out, year after year, Mac who brought me who bought me and raised me and says I'm no longer cute. As if a silver as if as if a silverback could ever be cute. Moonlight falls on the frozen carousel on the silent popcorn stand on the stall of the leather belts that smell like long gone cows. The heavy work of Stella's breathing sounds like the wind in the trees and I wait for sleep to find me. Mac gives me a new black crayon with a fresh pile of paper. It's time to work again. I smell the crayon, roll it in my hands, press the sharp point against my palm. There's nothing I like more than a new crayon. I search my domain for something to draw. 
What is black? An old ba banana peel would work, but I've eaten them. Not tag is brown. My little pool is blue. The yogurt raisin I've been saving for this afternoon is white, at least on the outside. Something moves in the corner. I have a visitor. A shiny beetle has stopped by. Bugs often wander through my domain on their way to somewhere else. Hello, beetle, I say. He freezes, silent. Bugs never want to chat. The beetle's an attractive bug with a body like a glossy nut. He's black as a starless night. That's it, I'll draw him. It's hard making a picture of something new. I don't get the chance to do that often. But I try, I look at the beetle who's been kind enough not to move, then back at my paper. I draw his body, his legs, his little antenna, and his sour expression. I'm lucky. The beetle stays all day. Usually bugs don't linger when they visit. I'm beginning to wonder if he's feeling all right. Bob, who's been known to munch on bugs from time to time, offers to eat him. I tell Bob that won't be necessary. I'm just finishing the last picture when Mac returns. George and Julia are with him. Mac enters my domain and picks up my drawings. What the heck is this, he asks. Beats me, what Ivan thinks he's drawing. This is a picture of nothing, a big black nothing. Julia's standing just outside my domain. Can I see it, she asks. Mac holds my picture up to the window. Julia tilts her head. She squeezes one eye shut. She opens her eye and scans my domain. I know, she exclaims, it's a beetle. See the beetle? Over there, by Ivan's pool. Man, I just sprayed this place for bugs, Mac. Mac walks over to the beetle and lifts his foot. Before Mac can stomp, the beetle skitters away, disappearing through the crack in the wall. Mac turns back to my drawing. So, you figure this is a beetle, huh? If you say so, kid. Oh, that's a beetle for sure, Julia says smiling at me. I know a beetle when I see one. It's nice. I think I have a fellow artist around. The end of page 59. I hope you liked it and enjoy the next few pages. Have a good night.